Let's go back to the beginning of Anne's story, uh, the day when uh, Gilbert pulled her hair, calling her carrots, and she smashed the slate on his head. Both of these acts are wrong. Pulling others by the hair and humiliating them in front of an entire class is wrong. But so is smashing slates, or anything else for that matter, uh, on people's heads, in retribution or not. Uh, in any teacher's classroom, such acts on their own would result in a referral and likely a detention after school. Gilbert apologised instantly, in fact, continued to apologise for virtually the rest of the book. Um, instead, for Anne, the iron has entered into her soul, as she says, uh, in chapter 15 of the first book. And proudly and indignantly, she cannot find it in herself to forgive him. Enter forgiveness. Anne remains indignant and resistant to being able to accept Gilbert's apology for a good few years, uh, until eventually she admits herself to being um, a stubborn little goose in the last chapter of the first book. His relentless apologizing and patience uh, with her over those years and his eventual sacrifice of the Avonlea school for her teach her the value of loyalty and forgiveness. Thanks to him, she becomes a better person. Correspondingly, Gilbert's soul is enriched by Anne's unorthodox way of looking at the world, making her stand sharply apart from all others. He pulls her towards the prose, she pulls him towards the poetry of life. None is enough on its own, none is better than the other. They complement one another. Anne without Gilbert is too dreamy. She needs him. Gilbert without her is not dreamy enough. Gilbert's long-standing friendship improves her character, while she improves his. For this, like yin and yang, they love each other. They share a common core, thus it's not a matter of opposites attracting, while retaining their original unique individuality. Together, they build each other up, sharing memories of their long-standing relationship of improving each other while standing by each other, sharing their friendship after the initial bumpy ride, challenging each other and picking each other up when needed. Anne loves Gilbert because she knows that thanks to him, she's a better person, kinder, more forgiving, a perfect balance between the imagination and the reality of everyday life. The theme of being enriched by others for the ongoing development of character permeates Lucy Maud's books. Uh, Marilla and uh, Matthew perform a similar role. Marilla, with her curt, crisp responses demanding of Anne gratitude, modesty and respect of her elders, and Matthew, with his love unconditional, showering Anne with gifts, not least the puffed sleeves uh, dress, of course, um, Marilla's gift is teaching Anne about the value of enjoying small things of everyday life and uh, being grateful for the simplicity of life. Matthew fulfill, uh, fulfills Anne's dreams, which had been long held and unfulfilled. While Marilla prevents Anne from becoming arrogant, Matthew prevents her from becoming bitter and resentful. Anne and Gilbert's romantic love is a reflection of that same concept, being yourself is not sufficient on its own. What others bring will fulfill and complete your soul. In this view then, Anne and Gilbert's love is a synonym of becoming or at, le or at the absolute least um, striving for goodness. Goodness in this perspective means compassion, understanding, um, forgiveness and rejection of resentment, replaced by imagination of how others feel, suffer, ache and beg for help and understanding. In this light, one of the union of lovers towards pure goodness, uh, there is hope for us. Hope for us being just good. It is a union of kindness in a never ceasing struggle towards the unachievable golden hill, as Stephen Fry a British writer, a comedian and uh, a TV personality has once put.
So there is a glorious coming together of two human hearts, different yet common, two jigsaw pieces. Uh, you thought on first glance not slotting together, but perfectly matching together in the end, on further inspection. Once they have come together, more pieces can be added to them. But you have to be patient. Sometimes it takes some effort or numerous attempts to fit them. You might need to look harder or perhaps even rotate your jigsaw to make it fit. But if we persist and not reject the pieces that on first glance seemed unsuitable, we can build a full picture. That's the vision.